All right, so here in our second podcast of Unit 3, we're talking about calculating our equilibrium constant K from other K values. And this is just going to help us finish out page 8. Uh, and we've already kind of talked about this a little bit, but we're going to go into a little bit more detail with it. So in general, you might be asked to make some changes to K for a single reaction, um, either calculating or comparing the K values, or to change and combine K values from separate steps uh, of a mechanism into an overall reaction K value. And so we're going to go a little bit deeper into mechanisms uh, than we did in kinetics, and we'll revisit this again later on in our thermodynamics unit. But if we have this general equation where we have substances A, B, C, D, where that have the coefficients J, K, L, M, um, normally we do products over reactants. So we'd have C and D raised to L and M powers over A and B to the J, K powers. But if we flip that reaction, so our reactants become products, our products become reactants, our K value is going to be inverted. We're going to do 1 over K because our products and reactants have shifted places. So they're going to shift places in our K value. Top goes to bottom, bottom goes to top. But if you have the value, all you have to do is 1 over that K value, and that will give you your new K value for that new flipped reaction. Now, if we multiply a reaction by a number, let's say N, and I've shown you like putting that N in there, remember N is going to become a coefficient or be multiplied by any coefficients that are already there. And because our coefficients are what we raise our substances to, to a power of, then when we multiply by a new coefficient, we add that n in there, our k value is going to be raised to the power of n. Now in a mechanism, if we have two steps, uh, two different partial reactions that are going to add up to our overall reaction that have the k values k1 and k2, when we add those two steps up to get our overall reaction, then we're going to be multiplying their K values together. So in general for mechanisms, and we have two examples at the bottom of this page uh, that have mechanisms that we're going to try and combine into an overall, you're going to have to change each of the reactions to make it match our overall reaction. So first start by looking at the individual steps and different partial reactions for the mechanism and multiply or flip or cancel the substances that you need to in order to turn it into the overall reaction. And then your final step is always going to be to add up your reactions, which will mean multiply the K values after you've made any other changes to them. So let's see this in action in this first example. So we have reaction A, gas, and in equilibrium with two B gas molecules and C gas. Um, and it's known to follow the two-step mechanism below. So we have these two steps. When we're trying to work this out, what we need to focus on doing is finding and kind of getting each of these substances from our overall reaction. I'm actually going to highlight these so that we can keep track of them a little bit better. And we're just trying to cancel and combine these second and the partial reactions in order to get this overall reaction. So we are trying to get 1A on the reactant side. Well, in this first partial reaction, we have 1A on the reactant side. So we want to keep this first reaction the same. We don't want to change it. In fact, we also have that 1C molecule on the product side. So we can get both of those substances by leaving that first reaction the same, which means we're going to leave its K value the same. So we're going to use that 1.55 later on to get our overall reaction's K value, but we're not making any changes to that first reaction. Now when we look for our B, we need two B molecules on the product side. And here we only have one B on the reactant side. So to make that match our overall reaction that we need, we need to flip that second uh, step of the mechanism and multiply it by 2. And that means for our, the K value for that second partial reaction. Flipping the reaction means we're going to do the inverse. Multiplying by 2 means we're going to square it. 
It doesn't actually matter what order you do those in. You could square it and then do the inverse or inverse and then square. It doesn't matter at all. And you know, take a second to double check that in your calculator to see that it does turn out to be the same value. But we've now flipped and multiplied by two. So that means that we are getting our 2b on the product side. And you could rewrite this if you wanted, and it would become 2x in equilibrium with 2b. And you would see there that we get our 2b that we were looking for on the product side, and the 2x that we have here on the reactant side, Oop, not what I was trying to do, is going to cancel with the 2x that I have on the product side. So those don't matter at all. Everything that isn't in that overall reaction is going to cancel, but you don't need to focus on the canceling and combining part there. As long as you focus on getting the substances that you need in the overall, everything else has to cancel if we're getting the right substances for the rest of this. So now at this point, we've done what we need to do to these partial reactions but we still don't have our overall K value until we add up these reactions. When we add up these reactions, that means we're going to be multiplying the K values together. So we take that first step K value that we didn't change at all, then the second step K value after we've made the changes for flipping and multiplying it by two, our unrounded answer would be 0 0.0024335 but because we had three sig figs in both of our other k values, we're gonna round that to a three sig fig answer. So hopefully that's not too bad. It's not really equilibrium focused, but both of these are equilibrium reactions and we're dealing with k values, um, but it's really just about taking those partial steps and making them add up to our overall reaction and knowing what to do with the k values when you change those steps. So there is a second example here for you to work out, and I want you to try it. You don't have to get it perfectly, but I do expect to see some work in this space, um, you know, telling me what changes you might need to do, changing our K values accordingly, um, and then combining them together. You should get 1.7 times 10 to the negative 16th as your final answer if you've done it correctly. I don't need it to be perfect, but it shouldn't be too hard after the example that I worked out with you uh, a moment ago to get this to match. I just want to make sure that you have that ability, and if you're struggling, if you're not getting this answer, you know, either I made a mistake or you made a mistake, and we'll work it out together, figure it out uh, a little bit more in class. That's really all that I've got for you for this video. Hope it wasn't too bad.